I've just bought my very first 3D printer. It's a Flashforge Adventurer 3. And I honestly don't know why I've not had a 3D printer before. I've got everything else. I've got laser engravers. I've had several of them, laser engravers and cutters. I've got a plasma cutter, CNC plasma cutter. It will cut up to 18 mil of steel. But I've not had a 3D printer until now. I've always thought, what can you do with a 3D printer that you can't fabricate by hand? And quite honestly, I've been amazed. There's CAD software out there that's free. I'm using Tinkercad and it is simple, it's easy. You can use it straight away. It's really intuitive. The first thing I thought when I got a 3D printer is build a cannon. I got onto this program called Tinkercad and it's a free bit of software. Uh, it's all online, so you actually use it online. You need an internet connection. And I came up with this, which is my three-dimensional design of a cannon. Now, I, I, I made a cannon, first of all, with the 3D printer, and I was absolutely stunned by the quality. It is absolutely perfect. You've got the little fuse hole here, and, and it, it just looks great. But it's not really a cannon. It's just a tube with a hole in it. I thought I'll go one better and I'll use Tinkercad and I will use it to design a cannon with proper trunnions and a, um, a carriage. And this is what I came up with. If I scroll this around, you'll see you've got the, uh, the cannon barrel there, the carriage, and I've got some wheels. And I thought I'll just put a bit of brass through that and, uh, and that will hold my wheels in place. And then the rest of it, the cannon will sit on the trunnions, on those little hold cutouts and uh, and it worked from there. With Tinkercad, once you've designed your 3D model, what you have to do is export it so the, the Flashforge can actually read it. You export it as an OBJ file. OBJ file, you call it what you want to call it. I'm going to call this, um, when it comes up, I'm going to export that. Oh, and it comes up straight away. It exports as shiny Elzing. Don't know where that got that. It puts it into a zip file and it calls it Tinker Object or OBJ. I put that onto my desktop and I'm going to nickname that as Canon Print. That is my Canon Print. I now go into the Flashforge software, which is Flash Print. And I go File, Load File, and I find my Canon Print and for some reason it always says repair model repair it object has been repaired and there it is there's my cannon all in glorious 3d you can see the trunnions there the hole the wheels um everything's there it looks great now all you have to do is press print and when you press print it comes up with a whole load of options to choose what you want to print it as. I want to print it in PLA because that's the uh, the filament that I've got. Uh, I want to print it in high, so that's the resolution, so a high resolution. And I go to more options and I want to infill. It's, it's, for some reason it, uh, it sticks at 15%, but because I'm doing a Canon, I want to infill it 100% so everything is solid, or everything is, as much as it can be is solid. I'm going to save that configuration and go OK. What do I save it as? Save it on the desktop as Canon Print. So save that. And now it's going through and it's creating the layers. 428 layers. And you can actually go through the layers. Look, there you go. It's going through the layers and you can go down to where the fuse hole is. Make sure the fuse hole goes all the way through. Go down to the trunnions, make sure they're nice and solid, and then down to the carriage. Yep, everything's absolutely solid. And then you've got the base layer, which that helps it stick to the actual platform. All looks good there. I then have to come out of that because it's already done it. And save wherever my Canon print is. It saved it to the desktop right here. And I save that onto a thumb drive, onto just a USB stick. Done. Now I take the USB stick over to the Flashforge Venture 3 and see if it prints. I started a time lapse so I could watch back what was happening. And here it is. The time lapse, it starts with the printer laying a bed and that is its base level. It then makes a tiny small level that can be cracked away from the actual print. And then it starts printing your object. So you can see it's printing the wheels there. It's printing the, the barrel. 
and it's printing the carriage right behind it. The print says it's going to take about three hours to complete and 7.7 .7 meters of filament. My battery ran out on the uh, GoPro, the time lapse stopped, but here it is back on. Now it started the trunnions and the trunnions, obviously they're a bit droopy at the beginning, but then it seemed to print it fine. I just took a knife to it and it actually cut it off. Um, it's printed all the carriage and, uh, and the wheels. And now it's just printing the hole up. There it is. It's printed the hole. Once it's printed the hole, then all it needs to do is print the dome on top. And of course, I then put a ball on the top of that just to make it look authentic. Voila, a completed cannon. Grab my model out and it's stuck to the platform. So you rip it off the platform and then it's got this base layer that you just literally just tear off the bottom. Once you've torn it off the bottom, you can see a few hairy bits, but we can uh, either cut those or burn those off later. I tried burning them off first of all, and it just melted the plastic. It wasn't particularly good, but it did get rid of a lot of the feathering. I then thought, right, I'll take my Stanley knife to it, and that made a much better job of it. And I tell you what, the, the print quality is fantastic. Once you got rid of those feathers, it is superb. Now my hole, I made it seven millimeters for a six mil BB. And the six mil BB fits perfectly. Very pleased with that. It also had a few feathers inside the actual barrel. I just got a metal rod and I, uh, I scraped those a little bit and it seemed to make it really smooth. Putting together the carriage, I thought it needed a bit of a sand because it was a bit rough on the underside where it was connected to the base level. I just sanded that off a bit and then took a toothbrush to it to make sure it was nice and shiny again. Then I've got two flat levels and uh, I'm going to stick it together with super glue. Got some super glue there. Put the super glue on one side, activator on the other side, line them all up and press and don't let go. The activator only takes about 10, 10 seconds to, to set properly, which is great. Spray a bit more activator on to make sure it has set properly. Gonna now put my cannon barrel on there. Let's see what happens. Look at that. I actually made the cannon barrel a little bit front heavy. If I was making this again in the future, I'd probably put the trunnions up another, probably five or six mil up the, up the barrel so that it doesn't lean forward so much. The wheels, I'm just gonna connect them up with a bit of brass rod, a bit of brazing rod. Brass rod was through, pushed it through, stuck the wheels on, and there it is. My little cannon carriage has got wheels. Stick my barrel on. And there we go. We have a fully working cannon. It's uh, it's a bit bit front heavy, but I can sort that out. Dob of glue on the uh, on the back there onto the carriage, and that is going to set it perfectly. I mean, it's going to set it in one place perfectly. <laughs> Make sure the BB fits, and it does. Brilliant. And there it is. One complete cannon. One three D printed cannon. All ready to fire. Take it next door, give it a go. I'm gonna use really fine black powder. I'm probably only about half a gram for my first shot. And then I need to grind down some powder with a pestle and mortar to make it fine enough to fit through the fuse hole. I'm only gonna grind a few grains of black powder. So it's not gonna hurt me even if it does go off in this pestle and mortar. There it is, a nice fine powder. That's gonna fit through that touch hole perfectly. Right, load it up, get the cannon, chuck a bit of black powder in it, a bit of the fine black powder all the way down. Then I need a bit of wadding, I'm going to use a bit of uh, blue roll for wadding. Push it on down with that rod all the way to the bottom, make sure that it's nice and rammed tight. Stick my BB in and again, ram that down, make sure it's nice and, uh, nice and tight. 
And then the fuse hole, the touch hole, I need to fill up with that really fine black powder. And that is gonna be what I light. It is officially ready to fire. This was my very first firing of my very first 3D printed cannon. Here we go. <laughs> very well. That was incredibly successful. Brilliant little 3D printed cannon. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. 